Hi, so in this second tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to actually install Power DNS Admin. Uh, and with this web based uh, tool, it actually makes the process of uh, managing the Power DNS uh, server so much more simpler. As we can just use a web based uh, graphic interface to add domains and manage uh, domain records. So, the first thing that we're actually going to do is to download and install Python 3. So, just copy and paste that command to actually do the installation. Type in Y and press end. The next thing that we're going to do is to install some essential system uh, and application build tools that are also needed by the Power DNS uh, admin tool. So let me just clear my screen and paste in the command. So it looks like I've got an issue with the command. So let me just make a correction and then press end. So we're actually now installing the build tools. And then the next thing that we're actually going to do is to add the node.js uh, repository to Ubuntu. So you'll need to first add this repo repository for you to actually be able to install node.js. So I've added the repository and uh, when you actually uh, run the command, it will automatically update, it will actually automatically run the apt update command for you. And then the next thing that we're going to do is to actually install node.js. So just run the command apt install node.js so the next thing that we're going to actually do is we're actually going to uh add uh, the repository and gpg keys for the yarn package so just copy and paste the command to add the repo and the essential gpg keys um, and then once you've actually run through these two commands uh we're then going to actually install yarn so I've added the repo and I've also added the GPG keys. And then after that, you just have to run the command apt install yarn. So as you can see, I'm actually installing yarn now. Okay. So once the package installation is complete, uh, I'm actually then going to clone the power DNS project from GitHub. So let me just clear my screen. And then I'm going to copy and paste this command to actually uh, clone the Power DNS admin project from GitHub. Okay, so let me just run the command sudo su and then paste in the command to clone the uh, Power DNS admin project from uh, GitHub. Once the clone process is complete, run this command to change to the pdns uh, HTML directory. So let me just copy and paste the command. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a virtual environment. So just copy that command and paste it into the command line interface. And the next thing that we're actually going to do is to activate the environment and install the library specified in the requirements.txt file. So let me just copy the first command that actually activates the environment. And then let me just copy the next command but then installs uh, some uh, essential libraries that are needed. So let me just paste that in. So it's going to, so the command is actually pip install upgrade pip. And then after that, we then run the command pip install uh, requirements. So it's then actually going to install the libraries that are specified in this requirements.txt file. So just run the command. As you can see, the installation is now actually happening. Once the installation is complete, just run the command deactivate to move out of the virtual environment. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, configure the default underscore config.py file. So I'm just waiting for the uh, installation to complete. And then once it's done, just run the command deactivate. I'm just going to clear my screen and then copy the next command to edit the default underscore config.py file. So just paste that in and press end. So as you can see in this file, we need to configure the uh, MySQL database user, the password and the uh, database name that we created in the first in the first uh, tutorial. So i just typing in the password, the database password. And let me just uh, specify the database name. So once you've uh, done these uh, actions, just press Ctrl O, press Enter, and then press Ctrl X. 
So the next thing is I'm then going to go back to the PDNS HTML directory. And then I'm then going to go back into the Python virtual environment that I actually created earlier. Uh, so, um, and then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a database schema uh, using these commands. Um, so let me just run the command uh, flasca db upgrade. So this command creates a database schema for the uh, uh, Power DNS admin uh, web uh, console. And then once you've uh, run the command, you then need to run the command uh, yarn install pure log file. So if you run the command, uh, it will actually generate some essential asset files that are actually needed by the uh, PowerDNS uh, admin console. And then once that's done, you then need to run the command flask assets build. And then you then need to run the command deactivate once that uh, asset build process is complete. So, uh, okay, so I'm just waiting for that to complete. And then, uh, okay. So if you run the command deactivate, you now need to edit the pdns.conf uh, configuration file. So just uh, run the command deactivate and then clear your screen. And then the next thing we're going to do is to edit the pdns.conf file. Uh, so in this file, I'm going to set the API parameter to yes. So let me just set it to yes. And then you need to set, set the, you need to also uncomment the API key uh, uh, parameter. So exit out of that file and then go back to the default underscore config.py file. So from this file, we're actually going to copy the uh, uh, API key, which is secret key. So just copy that, close out of that file, and then go back into the pdns.conf file configuration file. So on the API uh, key uh, parameter, you need to then uh, paste in the API key that you copied from the previous file, and then press Control O, and then press Control uh, X. But actually, before we do that, let me just uh, enable the uh, web server for monitoring purposes. So I'm just uh, enabling it. I'm just setting it to, to, to enable that key too. And then I'm going to set it to listen on the local loopback address. So once that's done, you then press Control O. Control O, press Enter, and then press Control X. So once you've uh, made these actions, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to restart the PDNS uh, system service. So just copy that command and paste that into your terminal window. So we've restarted the service, and then let's just check if all of the changes that we've actually made have, uh, are actually going to generate any errors. As you can see, we don't have any issue as of yet because the service is actually set as uh, active and running. So the next uh, important step is to install Nginx. So just run the command uh, apt install uh, Nginx. Uh, type in Y and press end. And uh, once that's done, we're then going to create an Nginx uh, configuration file. I've actually already copied the config. Uh, I'll also include this configuration in the video description. So you just have to copy and paste the config into this file. Press Control O, press Enter, and then press Control X. And then I'm just going to remove the default uh, Nginx uh, site. And then after that, I'm just going to run an Nginx uh, configuration test. So just run the command Nginx uh, and specify the T option, and you should get a syntax as OK uh, result. The next thing is I'm going to change the ownership of the P uh, pdns uh, uh, directory to the www data uh, user and then after that you just need to restart the nginx uh, service okay next i'm going to create a uh, pdns admin or service file so this will just make ensure that the pdns uh, web server is always running so just copy and paste the configuration into this file 
and then press Control O and press Control X. And then the other thing that I'm also going to do is to then create a PDNS admin socket file. So just copy that command and paste that into your terminal window. Then press Enter. So again, you just need to copy the configuration and paste it into this file file as well. Press Control O, then press Control X. So once uh, you've done all of this, you need, now need to create a directory in the run pdnf admin uh, directory. So I'm actually creating an environment file. So let me just uh, copy that command and then paste that into the terminal window. So just press enter and then uh, you just need to then set the required ownership and permissions for the uh for the two directories that we've actually created so just copy those two commands and then after you've actually copied them through you then need to run the command uh, systemctl daemon reload so just copy that command again and uh, paste that into your terminal window okay so um we're then going to enable the pdns.service and pdn pdns uh, admin.socket file to actually start up at system uh, boot boot up actually and i'm just going to run the status command to check if the two service files are actually running so we'll browse the window and uh, type in the url for the power dns server click on the create an account uh, link and then type in your credentials for uh, a user account so type in your credentials on the sign in page again and then click on the sign in button so you need to make sure you never forget this password so that you never lose access to your Power DNS admin server. So as you can see, we've actually gained access to the Power DNS admin uh, web uh, console. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to complete the Power DNS API configuration. So let me just go back to the default underscore config.py file. So I'm just copying that uh, serial key and then i'm then going to paste that into the api key field and then click on update so that's the last and final configuration step that you need to take uh, in terms of setting up the power dns admin now web-based application so to create a domain you just click on new domain type in the domain name that you'd like to register or that you would like to manage in your system and then you need to set a type between native master and slave and then uh, you just need to click on the submit button. So you would have actually created the domain there. And um, if you actually uh, scroll down and click on the manage button, you can actually add uh, records for your domain. So you can create an A record, an MX record, uh, you can specify IP addresses for your domain and uh, stuff like that. So that's been it guys. Please like and subscribe to the channel. I hope the tutorial has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing.